looking for the next generation of Z-Wave smart switches. Today we're going to talk about the Zen 26 and Zen 27. <laughs> Wait a minute, no. The, Z the Zen 26 and Zen 27 Z-Wave in-wall smart switches from Zoos. Stay tuned. Hi again, John Stone, the DIY Smart Home Guy on the channel. It's all about providing you with tips, tricks, and reviews for your affordable smart home. Well, the new lineup of Zoos switches is out, and they've actually been out for about six months with the time I made this video, and I have just been delinquent on getting around to getting reviewed on on these things. My apologies to you guys over at Zoos, but hey, we're here better late than never. These new bad boys feature enhanced S2 security, which is the new protocol for Z-Wave. They also feature the new 500 series chipset for enhanced performance, and they are compatible in both three-way and four-way switch installations with your existing wiring. What that means is you can install these bad boys without rewiring your house. How cool is that? That is, of course, if your wiring supports it, which we're going to cover in just a couple of minutes. Before we go too far, there's a couple of important things that you need to know. This switch has a maximum load cap capability, capability, capability of 8 amps. That means you need to be careful of the load that you're putting on these things, but you should be sure to go over to the user manual and check that out to make sure that what you're doing is going to work inside this switch. The other thing that you should know is Zoos recommends that you do not use these for fans or motors. That's right, if you're thinking about using this dimmer switch for a fan switch, don't do it. I suggest you go find yourself a proper Z-Wave fan switch. I'll leave a link to one in the description below. This video is not a paid endorsement and I receive no compensation for making this video. Some products shown in this video may have been provided to me for free by the manufacturer, but this doesn't mean that I actually endorse these products. Below you're going to find affiliate links and I may receive compensation if you click on these links. The other thing that you're going to want to know is these do not require a smart add-on switch like some of the other products. In fact, you cannot use this with a smart add-on switch. You're going to want to make sure that you're only using a regular mechanical three-way or four-way switch. If you're upgrading from the Zen 21, Zen 22, Zen 23, or Zen 24 in wall smart switch, you're going to need to know that the wiring does change. These things wire in like normal three way switches, but if you're upgrading from the Zen 21, Zen 22, 33, 24, you're going to want to make sure that you go back and change the wiring back to normal. It is going to require you to add in a neutral wire. If you don't have a neutral wire in the box you're trying to install that smart switch in, this thing ain't going to work. Again, go over to my website. There's some information over there about how to figure out your wiring. Uh, go to my how-to section on the website. If you try and wire it in the same way you wired the old ones up, things might go boom. Other than that, these things look and act pretty much the same. They have the same basic case design, which means they're easy to install and easy to set up in your smart home hub. These switches are ETL certified, which means they are in line with North American safety standards. I'm pretty excited. Okay, it is time to open the box. Let's slide this thing open here. Remove the top and you will find, what are we gonna find? The user manual and inside that we've got a little white wire that we're gonna use to attach the neutral line of the wall box to the switch. And there's really nothing else underneath this switch except for a bunch of foam. So let's compare this thing to one of the older models. I got the Zen 21 down on the bottom, that's Zen 27 up here on top. And you can tell these things look almost identical. There are some small variances in the case sizes, but really the only way you can tell the difference is by looking at those model numbers on the casing itself. Now, if you have bought one of the older versions of the Zen 26 and Zen 27, it might be worth your time to do a firmware update. Again, I've left links to uh, how to do an over-the-air firmware update on the Zen 26 and Zen 27 in the description below. Uh, there's recently been some cool new features that have been added. The coolest parts about the firmware 2.0 is it added this auto on timer and full scene control. And the same goes with the Zen 27. You're going to want to check your firmware version on that as well. Um, again, different firmware releases has brought in additional capabilities, including uh, in 2.01, it added full scene control and double tap behavior control for the switch. On the SmartThings Hub, this does require to get that capability fully working. You're going to need a custom device handler. Uh, I've left a link in the description below. On the Hubitat side, uh, currently as of when I made this video, um, there's no custom device handlers for the Hubitat at this point. 
uh, but my latest reading says that they are working on that. Uh, the version 2.0 of the Zoos 26 and 27 switch solves some chattiness problems uh, that they were having with their firmware, and Hubitat will be looking at working on the device handler device handler for these switches. Now when it comes to installing these things, make sure that you shut power off to that switch before you go monkeying around in that switch box. It's also a good idea to go ahead and double check inside that box to make sure there's no stray voltage. I've left a link to a power tester in the description below. And of course, as always, if you are not comfortable performing any of these steps or you're not comfortable working with electricity, I want you to make sure that you call a licensed electrician in your area to help you work through some of the issues. So the other thing you're going to want to watch for is sometimes the screws on the side of this switch, when they come from the factory, they're screwed all the way in. So you're going to want to check the state of those screws. You might have to unscrew them before you insert those wires. So another couple of quick tips for you is when you go to insert these uh, wires in here, you're going to want to push down on the screw, uh, depending on which way you're holding that, you're going to, want to push that screw down when you insert that wire in there. That's going to make sure you get it uh, inside the little clamp that's in there. There's a compression clamp that when you screw it down, it's going to tighten around that terminal. So make sure you push these in. Uh, another thing is when you're installing the ground wire, this bare copper wire, right up here you're going to see a couple of holes. All you have to do is push that in and you're good to go. Again, I would hold that down and just push that wire straight in there and you're going to be rocking and rolling. So the other thing that I would recommend is after you get that tightened down, you give it a nice tug to make sure that that thing's not going to come out of there once you start moving it around in the wall box. On the side of these switches right here, you have these little tabs. If you're in a switch box that has two or three switches, you might have to break off one or both sides of these tabs to make sure that that's going to fit in there with the other switches. The only drawbacks that I see to this are, number one, you get that funky three-way switch operation from the manual switches when you're in a three-way switch configuration where up is off and down is on. Now, that's the way three-way switches have pretty much always performed, so it doesn't really bug me all that much, but, you know, it is a thing. The second issue is with the Zen 27 dimmer, when you want to dim the switch, you either have to use your hub, your app, or you have to go to the switch itself. Those three-way switch, uh, the manual switches, they are not going to allow you to do any dimming. But other than that, you know, I really don't have any complaints. I really appreciate the work that Zoos puts into their smart switches. They do a phenomenal job on their innovation. They're always updating their products and their customer support is spectacular. I was recently on a forum where some people were complaining about some of the things that were going on with the zoo switches and lo and behold there pop zoos right into the conversation and just very responsive to uh, what's going on in the community so love zoos love the customer support and i think they're doing a great job for us here in the smart home community and that pretty much wraps it up don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to click like over here there's a couple of other videos that you might enjoy you can follow me over at facebook and twitter both are at diy smart home guy and if you ever catch me in an airport be sure to come up and say hi i'd love to get a selfie with you so we can get it up there on the facebook page until next time cheers